across 70 cities. Uh, uh, they have serviced about uh, 70 million guests last year, which is just incredible. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us, Kailash. Again, very much like 92.7 Big FM. I think uh, it will be hard to find anybody in the participants who hasn't kind of watched a movie at one of your theaters before. Uh, thank you so much for joining the panel. Uh, thank you, Venkat, for this opportunity and uh, giving me the platform to talk about, uh, you know, about media and entertainment. I mean, while uh, we are the second largest player in the country and, uh, you know, the unfortunately for last seven, eight months, we are virtually uh, close to the zero revenue. But but the good part is still, uh, you know, we have the, uh, we feel that the market is still uh, going to come back for us and the, the viewing of it is not going to change on a permanent basis. So, so we are seeing, you know, uh, hurdles for next three, four months more. I, I think, but beyond that, the the cinema experience is something which will, uh, you know, again attract to the people to come back to the cinema. And and I mean, we have to think beyond, uh, uh, you know, the COVID also. I mean, we can't continue to think about. So, so even in difficult uh, current difficult times, we are looking at the cinema expansion project continuous basis. We are we are very confident that the business will come back on a track maybe in the next three, four months time. And that's what we, uh, you know, we already experience it in other countries where the the South Korea a lot of local content, you know, has been released, or in China or or, or Japan, wherever the new content came in, uh, immediately the cinemas were full. So that gives us a confidence, you know, that the uh, cinema in India, once the content started getting released, will will come on the track, and and we again will continue to grow in the in the market. So so as a, as a journey, I think. What I can say is that you know it's an interesting field to be in, and and definitely I will try and add the value in the this today's uh, you know the webinar wherever possible. Perfect. So thank you so much for that, Kailash. And I think it's great to see such a positive, optimistic view from you. Um, so probably our participants would know that uh, you know the the cinema uh, screen uh, based business has probably been the worst affected in the pandemic. Right, uh, most players have actually gone down to zero revenue. Um, so I think uh, coming from a CFO of a company like that, where he's still very optimistic about the future, I think, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an absolutely wonderful sign, Kailash. Thank you for that. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Hyson Farao, uh, who is the uh, controller at uh, Star TV. Uh, Hyson is an old friend and an ex-colleague. Uh, delighted to, uh, to have you uh, participating today. Uh, also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Amit Modi. Uh, who is um, practice my CFO's lead, industry sector lead for media and entertainment. Yeah, a quick uh, a quick word on uh, some hygiene matters. So uh, we are currently live on uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and a few other channels. Uh, all views that have been expressed by our panelists today are in their personal capacity. They do not represent the views of the organizations that they work for. Uh, today's session is a one-hour session as always. So we will close at 7 p.m. It's a working session. So what we'll be doing is to do a deep dive of how Ashish and Kailash have gone about uh, implementing some of these automation tools and what kind of financial impact did it generate. Okay, so it, we're kind of going to keep this very, uh, very brass tacks, very operational, very nuts and bolts. Uh, we're not going to be talking concepts here. Um, the questions can obviously be asked in the chat window. Uh, if you are watching this on LinkedIn Live, you can just put it into the LinkedIn comment box. Um, uh, Amit, uh, who I mentioned earlier, uh, as our media lead, and uh, Mira Balkrishnan, who is a pre-sales head, would be answering some of these questions. Uh, our attempt will be to answer all the questions by the end of the session. Uh, obviously, some of these questions uh, would be uh, curated for asking to uh, Ashish and uh, Kailash. The recording of this session would be available uh, on our YouTube channel in a couple of days' time. Yeah, so with this, let's kind of quickly uh, kick off. And uh, I would like to probably kind of go straight into uh, the first few uh, uh, questions. Um, uh, so Ashish, if I can uh, please start with uh, you, uh, right? So some of the uh, uh, so some of the initiatives that you that you mentioned when we spoke a little earlier uh, was around robotic uh, process automation, and uh, uh, you, you uh, I would just like you to kind of uh, give the participants a little bit of view of the work that you've done both on the revenue cycle as well as on the uh, expenses and creators cycle, Ashish. Sure, Venkat. Uh, so if you look at media entertainment, I think it is one of the most simplest industries to automate. And uh, our fixed costs, whether it is a TV broadcast, a radio broadcast or print, uh, 
is majoritily contracted and fixed whether it is programming is music royalty is transmission is uh, salary led cost or gna and admin led cost uh, and yet i think the timeliness at which we or as media industry largely reports financials is still not matching with the best in the class so i think that's largely comes out of more of a mindset issue uh, a more like a discipline issue uh, which tends to kind of hog us down what has happened with covid and when everybody had to work uh, you know from home and had to use cloud i think this has accelerated and brought about that uh, that discipline uh, so while the you know the use of ocr and uh, robotic process automation and uh, automated uh, accruals for repeated invoices was something which has been there for years i think it's the key piece is the implementation of that uh that you know the change management that was needed in the mindset uh because you know there's always that insecurity amongst people that all this is going to re- take away my job i think that's where the finance leadership comes into play to kind of um, you know make people understand that it's not about jobs or roles it's not all about far doing far more better things and using technology to do the routine so i think on the entire expense side uh, we have been able to kind of plan out a data entry operation which automates and does everything in advance which is already known on the revenue side i think uh, the industry largely suffers to a very large extent because of the industry the way it is happening although i think e invoicing and gst are have been big steps uh, towards automation uh, but yet in in some pockets the inventory management the traffic management uh, still has a few areas uh, which which need to be kind of uh, addressed uh, we of course were having a shared service center even before covid so we were operating on the cloud uh, but what has covid done is that it's allowed us to kind of look at far many the you know uh, utility tools dashboards for automation and including automation anywhere uh to look at again uh, using ocr and automation anywhere to automate a lot of planning a lot of analysis that goes behind it and that allows us to kind of do far bigger amount of data entry uh with lesser number of people and all working from home so i think that's uh, the key aspect and if uh, media entertainment were to use these virtues towards further areas because there are many more areas that one can look at whether it is on the compliance side whether gst tds or other regulatory compliances or whether it's the area of uh, looking at uh, you know intelligence data whether it is uh, you know how do you kind of look at what what kind of advertiser is going to be active today there are tools available which can do social media scraping so the we tools that can uh, pick up data from multiple databases and present before you in a single dashboard which can lead you to be far more productive in your go to market strategy so those are current areas which we are working on uh, you know the journey is long but i guess with automation it helps you refine where manpower has to be intelligently used got it so it's very helpful ashish so follow on question if i may um, are you able to give us some numbers in terms of you know what is the volume of transactions pre covid and uh, during covid and uh, you know by rpa coming um what is a kind of reduction in the fts or manpower that you were able to achieve i am talking about the revenue cycle now where you talked about uh, yeah. say the okay. ros so, and uh, you, know. you know we we have been able to reduce manpower by half uh, that to working from home but at the same time our volumes in terms of release orders has actually jumped 30% and i i don't mean by that that revenue has gone up because what has happened post covid is i think the ticket size has largely reduced people have started doing far more less tactical or small tactical campaigns and that has been the volume of transaction has gone up value of transaction perhaps has actually reduced but we have been able to manage that change with half the number of people that's phenomenal and are you are you able to you mentioned about auto, auto, automation anywhere as the as a platform uh, but if you look at the total implementation costs Uh, you know whether it's licenses or any consulting fees etc what would be your estimate on the payback uh, that you have been able to get out of this investment uh i think the payback should not be looked at more from the monetary perspective 
because i think uh, if anybody has to work from home and in a cloud environment where compliance is still can't take the back seat you will have to put in those compliances uh, you know going forward uh, but i'll be delighted to tell you that the payback is less than a year uh, but i don't think we should evaluate it in on that basis because i think it's a it's a must have now uh, because Got in it. our case i think we were able to get a lot of uh, low hanging fruits in terms of cost cutting there will be some very lean agile organization which may not be able to cut it but i think automation is more of a mindset issue it it's it's all about accuracy efficiency dashboard so that the human mind can actually be used to solve those problems where automation is currently failing you know and that's where strategy formulation relationships creative with uh, you know places those that's where that's what is the bread and butter of media entertainment that's where that comes in you know today uh, there's barely any industry in media entertainment which is actually talking about risk management and governance you know esg which is such a big topic in the manufacturing companies uh, if you look apply esg in, in media entertainment you'll talk about diversity you'll talk about environment you'll talk about uh, you know good practices and how you fit into the ecosystem i think finance people have to largely start looking at those because with our data native mindsets we can be you know paint a very large canvas uh, but what bogs us down is routine activities and finally when you go back home, you can't really talk about a, you know that these were the activities that made you proud sure. that day got it so somewhere ashish the point you are making is that the productivity improvement is a given because you're saying that the number of uh, documents or the volumes kind of went up 30% yet you were able to reduce your team size by 50% but you're almost saying that look the financial payback is a no brainer yet you are saying that let's not look at it through a financial lens alone because the productivity improvement you are going to get by freeing up your people to think about bigger issues is yeah. where you are really seeing the big payback coming through yeah so if 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 a finance guy has to actually set tell the ceo or the board a why one has to look at automation i think the answer lies not in cost the answer lies is what is the pain that you are trying to solve from Sorry, a consumer right. perspective what is the value try you are trying to create from a shareholder perspective what is the Got fit it. in the environment or ecosystem that you are trying to create from an organization perspective got it these right. are more burning questions and automation will just free up your resources to be able to tackle these problems head on head on got it fair enough okay so i think uh, that's a great uh, 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 comment on, around customer centricity and you know around that if i can actually get you in kailash um i know you've done a lot of work around analytics and uh, particularly around customer facing analytics and how that can be used to uh, to help decision making with uh, you know short time changes possibly bringing in uh, additional shows where there is demand so would you like to kind of share a couple of experiences on that front of how automation has helped you on the revenue optimization side sure sure venkat So, Venkat, uh, you know we are running 650 screen with the uh, almost 70 cities and 150 location across the country. It's like bigger than any uh, large retail setup, I would say. And uh, in last financial year, we we collected almost 2,000 crore rupees, you know, from our customer. The cash, I mean, total amount, and out of that, the 50% was cash. Now, dealing with 1,000 crore rupees as a cash. Literally, I mean, you have to count up 50 rupees, 100 rupees, 500 rupees, 1,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees more. i mean that's a kind of setup or massive setup we have and we generated almost 9 crore invoices last year uh, you know in last financial year now considering all these things uh, it's very critical for us that we have systems where uh, you know it it works on a real time basis to know at sitting at corporate office that what we are doing on ground what is my uh, demand how how many customer is kicked in you know uh, on on a real time basis we have the couple of outsourced partners like the book my show the ptm who are also telling uh, you know selling our tickets so at the same time my 150000 seats will be exposed to uh, my own website on on a uh, you know physical counter across uh, 150 locations then we have the book my show on a real time basis and with the the ptm so considering this you know massive setup the system is designed in such a manner where you know it is it is booked on a real time basis and we also on my phone uh, i mean on all the smartphones we have a app where we can go and access the data on a real time basis the which show is how many seats has been occupied how many is are vacant which movie is doing well which movie is doing bad 
which uh, star class is is uh, perfectly working which language is working you know last year uh, you will not believe but we have played 1100 movies title unique titles across in one financial year it means effectively uh, you know we have the 52 weeks in a year so 20 movies every week on week we have released and and such a massive data can be controlled only with the automation i mean so so we have created a kind of dashboards where we monitor we are able to monitor on a real time basis i mean uh, all those apps are in my phone itself i mean i need not to sit on in front of a desktop or a laptop and find out the data so all these data are available to the all senior management team and the controllers uh, you know uh, within the telephone and uh, i mean your own phone reach so so whether i am traveling or i am i am in the office or not in the office i i can access all this data now how this data and the massive data which helps us is you know it helps us in terms of planning our own programming when we talk of programming means basically the movie scheduling basically so what happens suppose we see uh, you know a particular movie or particular uh, you know thing which is happening on a particular area then we we come to know that this movie has a lot of interest from the people or people we don't have the interest based on that we change our programming immediately i'll give you a simple example of last year and even in the current year uh, you know in a, you know just post uh, this opening up recently we have uh, played uh, something called <coughs> the uh, burn the stage which is one of the korean uh, basically the music program which we played live on our screen we thought you know uh, in india the korean program will not uh, you know really work but finally we started with the two shows we opened and we realized that two show were folded in next half an hour you know on our on our complete booking and then we started extending to 2 2 4 5 6 7 and finally we ended up 130 show in a day and this was all possible because of the the real time data which we could see sitting at bombay i mean so while regional office and everybody started looking that you know the the bandar stage you know the bts which is where the you'll find all the uh, 14 year to 22 year is the age group who are the real follower of all these bands basically and i mean planning a two show to reach you know 130 show it was like a massive massive shot in just one day because the the normally these program happens once once in a you know uh, hello hello so once a, once in a you know blue moon yalash we can hear you okay 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 i thought uh, you know uh, you know i lost it okay so so i'm saying that this is the kind of dynamic programming which we have i'll give you another example uh, two more example so so the uh, you remember you must have remember the or many of the you know the participant here that the bahubali movie came in and there was like a rush you know mad rush across all the cinema across the country and we realized suddenly that even the 11 pm show in the night were full and and there were at least a 200 people waiting outside we decided to run a show at a 130 am in the night and it was like 80% full so this is the kind of dynamic programming is can be done if you have the real data available at any point of time and the access to the data on a real time basis because based on the this data analytics and the automation the revenue side can be at us like anything the another example is the uh, whether the, the the avenger end games which which came again in the last financial year i mean we played the first show because there was demand was such a huge demand across the country we played a show in jaipur at 4 am in the morning and it was full i mean those are kind of incidents you see based on the customer behavior on the screen the kind of mad rush which was there on the advance booking all this uh, you know all the sites and we were you know on a twitter we were getting like a 1000 messages in every 15 minute and based on those we took a lot of decision because those data is you know uh, directly accommodated in our uh, you know on portal and we could see that all those things were coming and based on this demands we could change lot of programming we we did an additional shows in in per se in, in you know plans and this has given us a, you know uh, advantage in terms of revenues because if if sitting in bombay or 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 sitting in any city if you don't even know that what is happening on your which screen then it is very difficult for uh, you know someone to make a decision you must remember you know uh, the the in uh, 90 uh, i would say in 2000 and in even until 2005 2006 there was completely manual ticket 
and you used to see those houseful boards across uh, you know outside the cinema whenever a good movie used to come and the tickets were somebody who used to sell on in the black market you know outside and these things were very common but the automation has made you know eliminated all these factors completely you know from the radar second part is it also helped the cinema to to modernize the way they are working it also helped in terms of you know the the planning a show from 8 am in the morning in a normal day uh, to to 12:30 in the night or 1 o'clock in the night based on the city uh, you know uh, the the conditions so lot of these thing has emerged within that one cinema you have now five auditorium six auditorium even 10 and 12 which is there in the country so all these things are coming up because you have the data you know the customer behavior you know the choice of the customer you know that how uh, what kind of journal is working in which area which language works in which area and all that i mean you will venkat surprise that you know a tamil movie demand i mean we found not only in tamil nadu or or, or karnataka we found that the, in the bombay there are certain pockets where the tamil movie works very well because we we started with the one show and then we realized there was a huge demand then converted to two show five show 10 show uh, in bombay in in pune in in uh, jaipur in in across the all the cities of the country so this is something the power of the data and analytics which has given us you know in terms of the automation and this is something which is very critical for our business because if you have to deal with a 1000 crore cash you don't even know somebody will pocket some money in his pocket and then go away and you can you know keep uh, tracing that person it's very difficult but something is very critical for us so, so we have such a system where everything is monitored on online on real time basis we have a system where we control cash on a day basis every day basis and then see that the money is going to the bank on every day basis so all these monitoring tools are in place uh, where we are able to uh, you know the help the business and support the business in such a manner where the data is very dynamic and the revenue side is working well so another example which i want to give you on the ad side you must have seen the uh, you know couple of advertisement which are played during the intermission and the beginning of the movie and sometimes people get irritated you know uh, because of the number of ads or the the length of the ad sometimes but we do all this sitting in corporate office because we know that there is some noise which is happening at some corners of the country and we are able to immediately cut down and we go and communicate the same to our uh, even the the advertisers and and so this is the power of the data and this is the power of automation which you know which which is there in our company i would say and really i am proud of uh, you know that the kind of dashboards we have which because it helps in in, in a revenue plan like any any manner got it so i think here uh, this is very helpful um uh, kailash you are making two points right one is on the revenue optimization so the example that you gave on say avengers or uh, uh, burn the stage i'm going to google that and study a little bit more uh, yes. about the south korean show uh, sure. so what you're saying is that wh- where you would have stopped with two the fact that you went up to 130 just means that the 128 shows revenue uh, would have been a opportunity loss had you not had the analytics which was telling you what the customer is looking for right okay. the other point that you're making is on the control aspect which is more the revenue leakage which is to say that because you have the analytics and because you are such a cash intensive business the fact that you have these tools with you uh, allows you to make sure that there is no leakage of the of the cash right yeah. so uh, if if i may ask you a question say the tableau uh, that you that you mentioned uh, from how many places or how many sources does the tool actually pick up the data from um, kalash so the data is coming from the every center wherever it is actually so so we the 150 centers where the data is collected at the best location and and it is checked and filtered at the uh, the i would say at the regional locations and finally everything is available in a in a totality uh, you know at the corporate office but it can be accessed by all the senior management team people i mean forget the corporate office i mean but we have given access of all these data on us phone itself so so Got we it. have created an app uh, you know so you can you can do everything on the move and we don't need to depend on physically sure. on the location uh, part correct so the crash my question was really that you know does it kind of pick up data from uh, say not only your pos uh, which could be an internal tool for you but also say places like book my show or does it kind of pick information from multiple databases was what my question was yes yes so so the, the information is is not only our servers it is the book my show which is synchronized on a uh, you know On a, on a real time basis and the, even the ptm and and few others so the data is online uh, you know come to our server and then 
every inventory the moment it is punched in the any country uh, any any part of the country say through book my show immediately it reflects on our server because right. otherwise we'll have a mismatch in the inventory sure, i mean inventory. i will have a one seat maybe occupied twice or or maybe a one seat is not booked for many sure. got it fair got it uh, uh, this is very helpful kalash i'm going to take the opportunity of pulling in uh, hyson farao of star tv who is here in the uh, in the audience today hello hyson i mean cut thank you hi uh very happy that you could join us um uh, hasan quick question to you uh, i mean would you like to share some ideas with the audience on maybe one or two automation initiatives that are currently running at star uh, with the objective of ebitda or cash flow improvement sure i'll do that um i think but before that i just listening to what ashish and kailash were just mentioning the thought that came to my mind is what is really the trigger for looking at automation you know so is it something that is a well thought of a uh, process by design is it something driven by a unprecedented situation like covid or is it a some other situation you know so i think the message i'm taking back at this is that you've got to keep leveraging technology to make sure we're ready for any situation with this covid or anything untoward okay to prevent the disruption to your business you have to embrace automation and make sure it's part of your life that's just one point which struck me as i was listening to the views uh, <clears throat> i think for us the uh, so we did a bit of robotics implementation okay and um, the trigger really was for uh, you know we looked at something called an orbit shift it wasn't something that we wanted to do a system implementation it started as ob- orbit shift so how do we change our systems how do we change our processes to be- to bring that substantial or a quantum you know leap into what we want to achieve that is where it all started off and that's how we looked at all the gamut of processes around you know touching finance touching controllership touching the business and see where can we implement it So I'm just going to talk about two uh, use cases. So the first is around the accounts payable space. So what this const- consisted of was we used um, UiPath, okay, which is uh, pretty much up there with uh, AA and the others, and we also built Abby Flexi Capture, which is an OCR uh, software. So we, it's a the bot we have is a combination of both these applications, okay. So what happens is when a vendor submits his invoice to us. he goes on to a portal designed for him using standard scp net netviewer technology he uploads his invoice there if it's a digitally signed invoice well and good if not still no problem you can still upload it okay that invoice is read by the ocr system it pulls in the relevant information from the invoice okay and puts that information into the scp system therein there is a match which happens with the purchase order or if there's no purchase order with the invoice the three way match happens okay somebody obviously needs to do the srn or the grn but it checks for the uh, quantity it checks for the uh, value makes those checks okay it deducts the tax at the appropriate rates and parks and posts the entry so really in some cases what we've done is achieved a processing of vendor invoice which is untouched by hand you know that to my mind was the single largest accomplishment that we had in our robotics piece the other piece of robotics implementation was around uh, the ott platform that we have so that's where as you know we've got millions of subscribers coming in all paying to various means pretty similar to what kailash mentioned for um, for the theaters right so you got people we got wallets you've got credit cards debit cards net bank net banking all of it so how do you reconcile millions of subscribers with the values coming in and what's coming to a bank statement so that's where again we've deployed a bot okay we've pulled all the information into an sql database because of sheer volumes and the bot works seamlessly to reconcile all of it throw up the exceptions and finally give us an output which is ready to move into the sap system okay so that's pretty much what we have done at uh, at uh, uh, star the only other aspect i wanted to just touch upon was the benefits i know some people alluded, alluded to this point and i fully agree with the point ashish made that we shouldn't look just at the monetary benefit i think the more important point is what are the checks being done what are the controls what are the compliance is being done for example you believe that a person is checking 25 checks on a particular invoice and it comes in he believes he's doing it but is he really doing it okay the bot makes sure it runs all those 25 checks 100% of the time with 100% accuracy and that i think is something which is really really important when it comes to transaction processing or any other you know uh, controllership aspect of the task that we are performing thank you hasan uh, very helpful uh, you know we have all heard of um, uh, no touch 
no human touch when it comes to you know manufacturing of medicines and cookies and eatables this is the first time you know it's a, it's a no touch when it comes to uh, web vendor payment uh, uh, vendor payment processing and uh, posting of entries in sap so that is phenomenal uh, you know one question uh, is you know what is the error rate uh, you know you mentioned about um, uh, adi flexi capture uh, i mean is it able to re- read All, all types of documents you know, the common challenge you find is that you can you can uh, you know teach a bot to kind of read x types of formats but uh, you know given a country like india we got so many vendors everybody is kind of doing it their way uh, at what at what to what extent do you kind of say that look i'm going to automate this process and at what point it becomes completely unviable to try and kind of teach a bot uh, to read every type of format yeah i think uh, the good part about a bot is that it's or the ocr technology is supposed to read across formats right it's 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 format agnostic that's how it's supposed to be in reality though if you have multiple uh, templates coming in it gets a bit lower on the accuracy piece okay what every company should try to uh, achieve is have a sort of a pdf editable format of an invoice coming in and typically if you have a digitally signed invoice you will more often than not get that sort of a invoice if that comes in i think you're pretty much there your accuracy will be 80% upwards maybe even more than that when it becomes a normal scanned invoice that's where the accuracy drops it could go to as low as 50 60% and that's a problem so really the point here is can we convert or up, up convert these sort of uh, invoices to the digitally signed invoices in a pdf edit- editable format once you get okay. to that PDF, pdf editable format i think you're pretty much there so 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 basically what you're saying is there's a little bit of uh, process change uh, uh work also that needs to be done uh, at the back end I mean, it's not just about the technology there has got to be some changes in in the way we are kind of working with the vendors as well uh, in absolutely. order to ensure yeah. absolutely and all this thought should happen much before you decide on your journey you know you can't yeah. do the get into it and then say okay now i decide i've got to change it fair enough got it thanks 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 asin uh if we can come back to you ashish and um, uh, you know to kind of uh, the first example you gave on um, on a beta improvement was more around say uh, cost and productivity improvement with rpa uh, but i know that you also done a lot of work on uh, using of analytics as a part of the pre sales function in order to kind of improve uh, the winning rate on bids that you make or the way in which you present value propositions to your advertisers who are basically your clients so are you able to kind of share some thoughts on how you do it and also what kind of impact has it generated i mean what, what are you hearing from your sales teams uh you know by what percentage do they think that revenue has gone up uh, because they implemented some of these tools so sure. uh so what tableau and some of these dashboards just like kailash was speaking uh does is that is able to pull data out from your own historical database your intelligence databases and third party subscriptions and other databases and present it before you uh, based on the query that you have made they are so easy to kind of manipulate and create that each of these reports can be custom drilled to various uh, specific queries that you have uh, now in a typical broadcast business you are actually trying to go out and be and and kind of solicit advertising revenue from your basic advertisers and uh, brands and agencies of the data that each of the broadcasters would really value is what is the advertiser actually doing across other mediums whether recently or whether it is when there seasonality involved say it's the winter uh, you know season what what did imami do you know in winter last year what did pepsi do in summer this year so i think those are the questions and when you are able to look at the customer media agnostic over a period of time and then kind of overlay that with the current intelligence that your sales team provides then there is enough opportunity for the revenue planning teams to curate a product or a solution which is custom made to deliver impact for that customer what's happened in the covid in atmosphere is there are no longer those casual conversations or corridor conversations and tea and coffee while initially in the first quarter people would still reciprocate a casual conversation or whatsapp and email but it's true that post quarter 1 everybody has become that much more busy and i think they value people or they value sales people who come with uh, a proper thought process which reduces turnaround time and a proper solution so i think a lot of pre sales work has now shifted from casual meetings and relationship building to data led insights 
data led curation of the solution and that's where uh, tableau and some of these other mediums help the back end teams to get that out and once there is data there is that much more conviction that even the sales guys can carry and uh, you know and just to be speaking a little further from uh, uh, you know what on the payable side which uh, you know you just spoke about i think what happens is that gst is actually revolutionizing everything the e invoicing is just coming so i think uh, also what has happened is that we have started consolidating our advertisers our agencies our our vendors you know and people who will only offer a certain kind of a quality of a deliverable are worthy of investing or working with sure. so that's also a discipline that uh, most organizations will push for and uh, i think that leads to a far more higher acceptance rate and automation and uh, frees up resources correct so very interesting points uh, that um, ashish so one point you're making is on how availability of data uh is helping you to kind of get doors opened uh with some of the prospects right because uh, they they see that you got a differentiated product and in your case the product is uh, information about what their competitors may be doing and understanding of customer behavior over a period of time across channels right and you're also making another point that while it's of interest to the prospect whom you're trying to break into it's also improving the internal confidence of your own teams i mean they yeah. feel better prepared when they're actually going out and and pitching for projects right so i think huge impact on revenue optimization obviously the other very interesting point you're making is about the choice of vendors so somewhere you're saying that in your automation journey uh the learning views is that it's not just about your company but it's also about the larger ecosystem and you have had to make some choices to say that who are the kind of partners that i want to be investing time in building a partnership with because i cannot kind of be 100% successful in my automation journey unless my business partners are also having the same kind of mindset absolutely whether it is you know payment through digital <laughs> means a standardized invoice timely invoicing uh, all these are like like must have you know if if a vendor is not able to give you that service it's better not to deal with it got it so there's one question that i see from and i'm going to start taking some participant questions as well here um so a question from mr ranjit uh, to you ashish is how did you arrive at a choice of tableau uh, as the as a tool because there's a bunch of other options available including power bi and so many others so any any tips that you have on how should one go about doing an evaluation uh, so uh, a big both of them power bi and tableau are fairly good uh, softwares and we have tried both of them and eventually it sometimes sometimes comes down to the uh, competency level that your team has you know because they are the finally the ones who are going to use it and drill it down uh, tableau tends to kind of work a little more better on dashboards and multiple databases uh, but finally i think the confidence of the team below uh, and their ability to use it uh it, it should be the deciding factor because you you really can't change everybody and you can't trust something which they are not going to be find it comfortable sure but but your point here is that tableau is a simpler tool to use is that the point you're you're yeah. trying to make yeah. okay got it when it comes down to dealing with multiple databases which are not that organized it's got it. a little better to use power sure. bi is also a very simple tool but it needs a little more of structured data to go in. sure got it fair enough yeah, if i can come back to you uh, kailash um so uh, i know that you've done a, a lot of very uh, interesting what i'm going to kind of go beyond uh, finance and back office processes and uh, touch upon a buzzword today which is internet of things and uh, when you were speaking the one thing that really intrigued me is uh, that you know uh, on your phone what exactly is being played on every screen across the country and you went beyond that and said i even know which of my um uh, which of my sound systems are working and which is not working right which is like amazing level of granularity to have at a centralized level for what is essentially a very hyper local business right so can, can you and you also kind of talk i know you've done some work around electricity cost control and air conditioning temperatures and consumption of uh, units etc so are you able to give us a, uh, the, the participants a little bit of idea about how are you leveraging iot technology in order to kind of drive ebitda savings so so uh, you know venkat uh, we have this something called the nox system which is connected to across the uh, you know the all 650 screens across the country so every projector has a server as a backup and that server is connected to a central server 
so basically this because of this the entire network system we we can see that the log you know uh, is flowing for all 650 screen uh, you know in front of us in the, in the corporate office at bombay now what it helps is you know it it not only helps us you know in terms of the seeing the log you can also see suddenly uh, the system is showing that a particular projector in uh, say uh, darjeeling in od number 3 is life is ending so basically every projector has the bulb basically the bulb's life is for certain hours 3000 hour 4000 hours based on you know the manufacturer's advice now the moment the, the 3500 hours happens out of the 4000 we will start giving you some kind of you know the notification the moment it reaches 4000 hours maybe that is still working but it will give you the, some kind of you know the indication and the, immediately the information will flow on your system that this particular bulb has completed its life i mean then the technician come in place and they will go and check at least you know on that particular night whether that particular bulb is still we can run for few more hours or few more uh, days or not so based on the physical condition they decide but this gives us a you know lot of saving in terms of sitting at corporate office because think about a situation where you you are watching a movie and in in, in in the half of the movie suddenly you see that the projector is going off which happens quite particularly you know but the the currently the default ratio is less than 0.1% you know no overall defaults which we do in in our cinemas and which is the 1.2% across the globe so if you can consider a us or europe scenario where the default rate is 1.2% we are 0.1% level less than 0.1% and this is only because of that you know the kind of systems which we have uh, so so this this uh, you know the knock system which which monitors not only the your projectors we have started you know linking in sound systems also so sitting in bombay i will say okay go and see the udaipur site number 1 or the number 3 the 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 uh, particular speaker at the you know near to the screen is something which is not budging at all so these are the things which is linked to the central systems and we are we are in the phase of you know putting one more additional track uh, you know uh, in future is where we are trying to see if the temperature of all the audits across the country and the lobby can be linked to this software and we can sit it sitting at online and and bombay or anywhere because it is the entire technology will float on the phone itself i mean so this this helps us you know not only the the customer behavior uh, you know improvement on the customer experience it also helps us in saving a lot of cost because centrally you know that which uh, thing is working which is not working so you can do a lot of preventing and you know maintenance in advance you don't need to stop the show in between and you know there will there will be a lot of noise and bad noise you know about you on the social media it's very easy nowadays if a person got a uh, gets you know even a popcorn which is little soggy in a day you'll five after 2 minutes that it is it on the twitter everywhere so so to avoid those situation or the complaint like you know you you people have uh, you know charging like bomb and you are giving me uh, this kind of a quality so to avoid this situation we are trying to link everything to a central server where everything can be monitored on 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 your laptop desktop or on on a uh, uh, mobile phone and what it gives is not only uh, you know saving in terms of the money because you know that what preventive maintenance you have to do second it 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 enhances enhance the uh, you know overall customer experience uh, you know on overall basis third is so it also helps us you know in terms of creating a brand and benchmark and we can always go and proudly say outside that you know the despite the us which is the most advanced country i mean the default rate is 1.1% and we are just less than 0.1% so so these are the kind of parameter and the quality which we are putting in place but of course this needs a lot of investment in the beginning and the return you will you know feel or visualize over the period of time but but the kind of satisfaction which we can see on the face of the people i mean that's very critical because that creates a long term equity for our business and that is something we want to retain the customer and right. and repeat customer uh, for us it like you know god is coming to the home got it so if i can uh, if i can stay on the concept of gods and possibly go to goddess lakshmi and uh, uh, this kind of take you a little bit back to what you were saying about electricity costs right uh, so what is the impact that you are looking to generate okay by by doing that particular iot project and if i can ask you what is the investment and what is the payback you know specifically on that particular project sure so let me let me give you so we did a study you know very recently uh, you know on this and we around uh, some 6 to 8 months back and unfortunately post that we have seen pandemic so the work is virtually on hold but we did a pilot in one or two places 
so the the investment is very small because we have to put some sensors in you know in some places at every cinema in auditorium as well as lobby temperature over 21 degree versus 24 degree which is recommended right, right now you know even by the our health department because of this covid another part so if you are able to maintain a 24 25 degree temperature versus 21 your saving would be in that you know 50 to 20 percent minimum so so uh, give you the example of our own company we have a 10 crore rupee as electricity bill on an average you know on a monthly basis so so 120 crore the investment and 60% of that comes to uh, you know goes to the the air conditioning of the cinema and that one point i mean so 72 odd crore rupees if if i am able to save 15% also i mean it's all, almost a 10 crore rupee a year and my investment will be on that maybe it's a one year recovery only i mean not beyond that no, so no. this is the kind of massive invest uh, you know the project which we are looking right now the second which we already done is that we we, we replaced the leds you know uh, across the country you know uh, two years back and the the payback period was less than one year uh, you know and it because because of the power savings across the country got it perfect thank you thank you so much uh, yeah, it is always nice to uh, hear these uh, figures right because it's it's very black and white and the business case is very clear i think which is the most important thing as a cfo when you kind of go back and evaluate these projects i think some of these are really no brainers um, i'm conscious that we kind of uh, coming close to one hour we got about 10 12 minutes left so i'll request uh, um, if the panelists can really kind of give us more rapid fire answers uh, right and hasn't i'm going to call upon you as well um, so first question to you uh, ashish from one of our panelists is what are the top 3 success factors uh, for a good rpa implementation uh, can i get like a 15 20 second answer on that one yeah so i think accuracy and efficiency i think something uh, which one of the panelists also spoke it's not about the how much human cost did you say with <clears throat> just the sheer amount of accuracy and efficiency that a machine will lend the credibility that it will lend and then eventually audits will become completely uh, you know smoother we could you know we could actually complete the audit also in a much more smoother manner so i think the efficiency and automation that comes into play across the ecosystem the accuracy that it brings in uh, is the most important uh, aspect all right um, so if i can come to you hyacinth and uh, if i can take you to the question of what are the prerequisites so what are the factors that one should ensure are already in place before embarking on an rpa journey to maximize the possibility of success are you able to come in on that yeah i think to my mind um, rpa works best on processes that are standardizable are repeatable you know so it would be best if you know you have a maybe a center of excellence or a centralized sort of environment of processing and ideally common systems that's when you'll really get the you know best of the rpa on your uh, on your process uh, the other thing is also one more prerequisite is just don't look for technology okay that by itself is not a magic wand you need to have people who can bridge that gap between technology and the process that you have so the and he, the, the people who can tell you that this process needs to change a bit or this technology needs to work like this for the best of both worlds to come together so i think there are the two prerequisites I, that i would say from my end you got it so one is repeatable processes standardized uh, uh, process standardized yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. the second one is people with the right mindset okay who can take this project to a success and the objective which so these are the prerequisites and the objective yeah. with which we should be doing it which is what ashish was talking about is not just the financial payback but also zero yeah. error accuracy Uh, faster turnaround times and uh, also better reliability uh, of the process. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there is one more question that we have here, uh, which is on uh, <clears throat> on whether during the RP and and probably Hasan, if I can address this question to you, uh, in your procure to pay process uh, when you embarked on RP, were you able to get hundred percent of your vendors on board? Um, on board in the sense. Um, They didn't have a choice, right? They've got to give us invoices. So right. what we were able to push them to get was the, the as I mentioned earlier, the PDF editable digitally signed invoices. And did we get all of them to convert? No, the answer is no, we didn't. It's a gradual <clears> process. <throat> we got around forty, fifty percent, okay, and then we kept increasing, taking up, upping the ante from there. But we didn't get all of them on board. But I think as we, as time went by, people saw that they were able to get more visibility on what's happening. Payments happened on time. They could see exactly, you know, where their invoices were lying and for what reason. When they saw that visibly transparency coming, I think they embraced it more openly. Got it. So you're saying that when you when you initially went live with this project, it happened with forty yeah. percent of the vendors. And today, right. at at what percentage are you, Hasan? 
uh, today if, if i were to take off you know so we are it's a very niche industry for uh, broadcasting right so there are certain production houses who have a different set of processing so that's out of the scope so if i take the entire let's say out of 100% if i take i would say around there are 70 75% got it and and you think that that's a good job done i mean uh, you know people should be beating themselves up saying that look absolutely. 100% of it absolutely okay absolutely absolutely probably okay. if let's say it is, if it is a company in the us or in uk there i think we should be able to hit the ground running with 70 75% there got and it. then take it up to 80 90% got it uh, and if you can ask ashish i mean what is your take on this yeah very similar i think uh, our off take was uh, close to 25% and uh, radio is a far more long tail business uh, you know from that perspective so we have reached around 65 70% but what we are doing now we have consolidated <laughs> vendors so we are refusing business for vendors who are not able to comply uh, and that is actually you know bringing us or would bring us close to roughly around 85 90% uh, going forward understood got it um uh, so one question and probably i'll just stay with you ashish is uh, see when we we talk about rpa we keep hearing about uh, ui path and automation anywhere blue prism it seems to be like the uh, top uh, top three companies out there um but you know uh, as a part of our audience we have got companies of all sizes with different pocket sizes in terms of budgets for automation uh, so what's your take on the universe of tools and consultants available out there i mean is rpa journey necessarily an expensive journey or uh, or, or that's not necessarily the case uh, it is to me yes <clears throat> it's a rpa journey is not a very expensive journey it's a, uh, you know it's a journey where one has to actually lay down the process i think it's a painful journey if you do not have the right kind of team uh, around you because implementation will completely go wrong so i think as uh, uh, somebody mentioned the prerequisite is to get the right team and the right to be process uh, in place after that i think the, the automation the, the technical aspect is, is a very smooth journey it doesn't Got cost okay. much it doesn't really require anything it's the implementation is the redesign and the post implementation that are the painful got it uh, hasan is that your take as well yeah absolutely i would tend to agree with what ashish says and i think uh, technology is i think not really a big uh, barrier okay and um, and there are a lot of firms it's not just the domain of the big four or you know the big large consulting organizations a lot of you know medium tier firms you know who are reasonably good what they sold you know they, they know their work so a lot lot of options available really got it fine now uh, i got one more question here on procurement based systems um and uh, this is not linked to ocr or uh, rpa i'll probably kind of come across to you uh, kailash um so the question here is around are there any apps uh, that are available to uh to, to get better visibility control uh, better quality workflows around procure to pay so i, I know that you done some work around uh, is it called fury is that the name of the app we would like to kind of share your experience quickly with the with the audience sure sure so my kind of you know we have the fury app which helps us in, in terms of the workflow basically so the workflow is mapped to the our phone systems where i can do a login and then i can see all the purchase orders which are pending in my name to be approved so we we have used technology in such a manner where you know the all these apps are making life easy because it's not possible for you sometime to you know sit in in the office and do and everything approve so so better you utilize this time to you know when i am in car normally you know bombay traffic it takes almost some 50 minutes to an hour uh, you know to reach to from home to office i mean that is the best time to utilize for uh, you know this such kind of app so so not i not only access the my data based on a day to day basis you know sitting at home or on when i'm traveling or sometimes on the airport lounge or something i mean so this time i utilize also to approve all those work processes and workflows which are there through this apps you know and and available on your phone and, and this is uh, i mean this is this is this is we are trying to implement more and more so that you you have more access to uh, and these are given to all the people who are really utilizing and we are part of the workflow basically understood that's and this is spelt as f i o r i the the app um, kalash yeah fiori it's f i e o r i yeah okay and this is from the sap family is it is yes, yes, yes 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 got it okay yeah i think again a quick side note to the audience is uh, you know there are obviously a bunch of tools available uh, they are available at different price points with different functionalities um, um, you know uh, most go for saas based models as compared to on prem but again there are options available there 
uh, if anybody wants any further, yeah, I can see that uh, Madhuri has put up a, a slide. Thanks for that, uh, Madhuri. So I'll possibly kind of quickly sum up. You know, it's uh, several ideas have been exchanged. Um, so these are some of the sample tools uh, that have that you kind of try to bucket uh, into into different buckets. So you can just kind of go back, yeah. So you can, the different tools on data analytics side for FP&A, automated budgeting, forecasting, fixed assets accounting, compliance management, um, you know, financial consolidation, bank reconciliations. I mean, you name it. Um, and, and there are ready-made tools available. So today, honestly, as all our uh, panelists have discussed, uh, availability of technology is is not a barrier uh, by any stretch of imagination. Okay, you 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 look for a tool, there will at least be two or three competing products that are available. What is critical is whether there is a change management mindset, whether there is a digitization mindset. That is something that money cannot buy. Right? You can spend money buy a license for an IT uh, IT product, but you can't throw money to kind of get people's buy-in uh, to a change management process. So I think today, the critical factor that we're looking at on why some transformation journeys are very successful and some are absolute disasters is that it's totally driven by the people's mindset. Okay, So I think if there is one takeaway, uh, the ecosystem of products and service providers to help you implement is fantastic. Uh, we all have to kind of introspect, go back and see whether we have the right team uh, internally uh, who can help us in this journey. Yeah, if I can uh, request Madhuri to go on to the next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, so I think some some tips, I think from our experience at my CFO, having done multiple uh, transformation projects. Um, so some tips to get stakeholder buy-in. With HODs, which is your business department heads, let's pick the projects that have got a clear uh, problem statement from a business standpoint. And that's what we saw from our panelists as well. I don't think they really kind of touched upon accounting issues even for 5% of the time. I think they were talking about pre-sales, they're talking about customer experience. Um, so I think it's very important to kind of pick projects that are operationally important uh, from a business standpoint. Uh, to get buy-in from CEOs, try and pick projects that have got a clear ROI, right? Uh, everybody wants to see that it's an investment and not a cost. So if you're able to kind of build uh, a business case to say that, look, this is a cost benefit analysis, you've got a better chance of getting budgetary approvals for those. Our, our experience is that while a lot of companies have slashed budgets across the board during this COVID period, the amazing thing is that transformation budgets have not really seen any impact. In fact, if at all anything, there has been a positive tailwind uh, for transformation budgets where come management's Progressive managements are saying, look, take the money and let's make sure that we are better prepared when a, a situation like COVID hits us again. Um, with your finance team, try and pick projects that make real-time single stream reporting possible. I think most mature companies have already achieved this, eliminating multiple uh, sources of truth, multiple sources of data. Uh, but I think the biggest beneficiary <coughs> uh, of an automation project is finance, which is why I think you find that CFOs are usually the project sponsors for most digital transformation journey. Because the one team that normally sits up to 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the night when everybody else has gone home is finance. Right? The more and more you automate, you will find that your finance team is able to go home at 6 o'clock. Okay, so that's a good target, I think, for all of us to take on as CFOs. Uh, that if not for the company's financial benefit, at least for the sake of our own team's work-life balance, I think this is a good objective to take on. With the board, you're always worried about uh, sustainability, scalability. Uh, so pick projects that address that. And in general, uh, especially when you're beginning your transformation journey, it's a good idea to show projects that have got a quick win, right? Because sometimes you have to build conviction, right? When you're able to kind of go back in two months time and say, look, this is the benefit that we have delivered to the organization. Then you get time for the next four months, six months, right? When people have got the conviction to say, yes, we are seeing some benefit. Don't try and pick complex projects that have got an 18 month uh, payback period. You know, usually there will be an implementation fatigue. Uh, that, that will set in after a point in time, and then you will lose the stakeholder buy-in, right? So initially, try and pick projects that give you a quick win. Next slide, please. Okay, some pitfalls to avoid. Uh, don't expect immediate buy-in and results. It takes time, right? So change management internally is the biggest battle that you'll have to fight. Uh, okay, it's I think, uh, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, probably a large company will be able to get all its vendors to comply. Uh, okay, maybe it's a complexity of two on a scale of 10. But if you have to get your own teams to comply, it takes more time. Okay, so culture change management takes time. Uh, so please budget adequate time for that. Um, people get threatened, right? And this is a point that I think all of our panelists made that when RPA comes, people are worried, am I going to lose my job? Okay, so it takes time to convince people that look, this is in your best interest to do the implementation. There can be false starts. There will be delayed implementations. 
it's very rare to see that you think a project will go live in three months time very rare to see that it will actually go live in three maybe it will be four okay but please stay the course don't get frustrated uh, a, a common error point number three common error that people make is to go for the perfect solution right so especially when you're moving from a highly manual process uh, and you try to automate then everybody wants all the features to be 100% automated without any manual intervention and sometimes the chase for what is perfect it comes in the way of of enabling what is optimal okay so i think that trade off okay between doing what is optimal and what is perfect is something that you will have to think through very carefully try and go for optimal i think that's a lot more practical as trying to go for perfection don't underestimate the personal time you will have to spend in investing the journey the change management is not an it project this is a business transformation project right so and because you are playing a very key role uh, in 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 molding the culture of the company uh, please be prepared to spend personal time on this and finally don't give in to the temptation of putting off we got to stay the course this is not a optional or more i think uh, automation digitization is pretty much now a question of survival uh, either we do it or we may not even be relevant in the next 2 to 3 years time yeah so those are i think the key takeaways obviously Uh, anybody who has got any other questions or you uh, want some advice on how to embark on this journey in your respective companies feel free to contact ajay or any one of us uh, here in the my cfo team um with that i probably kind of want to bring the uh, session to a close we have just passed uh, one hour uh, i'd also like to explain uh, anand's uh, absence from the session unfortunately he lost his uh, one of one of his colleagues at work um, and he called me at about 5 5:15 to say that he won't be able to join this webinar Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to kind of get anand uh, at one of our uh, future sessions um, i'm truly grateful deeply touched uh, by both uh, kailash ashish thank you so much uh, for agreeing to join this panel it's been wonderful having you uh, i just feel sometimes that you know one hour time is uh, inadequate to do full justice to the entire expertise you know that you that you had to share with us uh, hyacinth thank you so much uh, for uh, joining in and uh, sharing your nuggets as well as usual it was very crisp very concise very precise so thank you for your participation as well yeah any any last words uh, ashish kailash hyacinth before we hop off i think uh, thank you venkat i think it's it was a wonderful opportunity and i think uh, i'll just sum it up by saying that uh, perfection is the enemy of progress uh, so as venkat mentioned uh, don't go for that ultimate go for uh, what incremental progress you can make but keep the entire vision in place as a prerequisite keep the entire progress journey in place as a prerequisite so that you keep inching forward uh, step by step and automation uh, today is a must have and uh, only the companies who will embrace that and focus on or uh, re you know pivoting their businesses to achieve progress are going to survive the rest will actually be left by the wayside perfect thank you ashish Uh, thank you venkat uh, really to give this uh, opportunity my uh, the the i would i would say one of the you know the message would be that don't try and do everything automated in a day one because it doesn't happen so take a small steps every time a baby step maybe a, you do even the automation in 10 phases it's okay but but try and complete the first in the first go then second in second go and third in third go even if it takes maybe one year or two year journey because if you try to do everything on on a day one it never happens and it you know most of the system fails and people always try and do this mistake you know to to do an everything automated on day one so i think the the key is that you take a small steps in in and gradual manner and then it it will become a perfect organization in 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 you know maybe in two three or four phases and that's very critical uh, you know and critical uh, or important for any organization then i'll agree you got it thank you thanks atan kailash hasan No, thank you, Venkat. Thank you, my CFO, and it was really great to hear from Kailash and from Ashish. Appreciate all the thoughts and the views. Thank you. Perfect. Thank Thank you for joining in. Uh, also, thank you to all the participants for having stayed uh, back. I know we are about five or six minutes uh, past the time. So, folks who kind of joined in on Zoom, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever you are joining in from, uh, please uh, stay safe. And uh, I uh, best wishes to you and your family. Uh, for uh, the new year ahead and also best wishes for all success in your respective businesses uh, thank you all so much thank you thanks thank you thank you
थैंक यू सो मच